It's still the breakfast and plus TV Africa and our first conversation for this morning. As the 2023 general elections draw nearer, the federal government has reiterated that the administration of President Mohamed Buhari is not and will not be a threat to the media. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, gave the reassurance when a delegation from the International Press Institute Nigerian chapter paid him a courtesy visit in Abuja. He said Nigeria has one of the most vibrant and free press in the world and the administration was not about to stifle press, or press freedom or deny anyone his or her constitutionally guaranteed right. We have Chief Lecturer, Nigeria Institute of Journalism, Jide Johnson, joining us on this particular conversation. Good morning to you, Jide Johnson. Thanks for joining us on the program. Good morning, good morning, Johnson. Good morning to you, Jim. And good morning with Messiah. Yeah, good Our morning. Our viewers all over the world. Yeah, good morning to you. Also, now, the this uh, president, or not the president, rather, this a particular administration is saying Nigeria has one of the freest press and them. Um, the president has been very, very generous uh, when it comes to fr press freedom, uh, this uh, dispensation. Do you agree with um, the position of uh, the Minister of uh, Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed? Well, uh, that's, that's his own assessment. <laughs> and I would expect someone that would do an exam that would set the question, mark, answer the question, and mark the script and grade himself. So what would he do? So the minister is just playing the agama lizard, self appraisal, self adulation, and self exhortation. So that's his own assessment. But overall, um, that's not the true reflection of what has been the relationship between the media and the authority. It has not always been easy with the media and the authority not limited to this administration or limited to Africa. There's always been a struggle. There's an attempt by those in government to control the media. And there's the media's attempt to ensure that the people right to know it's it's it's, it's bizarre. So essentially, you know, we have what is called official government secret. Government will always wants to put a lot of their actions in secret, whereas the media will always want to throw light to what government is doing. So there's an ongoing battle. But with respect to this particular administration, it has been a cat and mouse game. There have been various attempts by the present administration to stifle press freedom. Uh, the attempts to, to come up with the social media being the various and um, um, the working of the NBC code and attempt to come up with the hate speech, hate speech um, law. These were various attempts by this present administration to start from uh, press freedom in, in our country. So, so how would you um, access, you know, the embassy? Of course, we know that the embassy was established to regulate uh, the activities of media houses. And so how far would you say they have fared in terms of, you know, uh, freedom of the press? Of course, we, we, we should have freedom of the now, press. With that particular... Uh, unfortunately, the embassy became highly partisan under Modibo Skawu's tenor. Um, under Modibo's cows, then on NBC became highly, and it was, on, it, was, it was unfortunate in the first instance that Modibo Kao, who happens to be Larry Kao, that was BBC correspondent for many, many years in, in Nigeria, um, was, was a journalist and that had an, an opportunity to hear, and he has worked with uh, a foreign media organization to, to, to hear them. Uh, NBC, but under his, as tenor, NBC came up with different um, measures, stringent measures, draconian measures to stifle, to stifle the broadcast organization in Nigeria. And I asked myself the question: What's the essence of NBC? What's the role of government in NBC? A friend of mine, the former chairman of Lagos NUG. 
did his PhD thesis on regulation of broadcasting in West Africa. Now, he did a comparative analysis of the NBC in Ghana and the NBC in Nigeria. Hello, Jide Johnson, are you still there? All right, we'll try and reconnect uh, Jide Johnson in a moment. Uh, you know, uh, Lai Mohammed, uh, that's the Minister of Information and Culture, uh, Mercy, qu said quite a lot yesterday. Let me just read some of the things he said. Hello? Uh, okay, we have um, JJ back. Uh, we lost you for now. just one moment there. So, okay. you are trying to come to the NBC in Nigeria and the NBC in Ghana. Please go ahead with your comparison. Yeah. So, the NBC in Ghana is controlled by stakeholders. The membership are nominated by the stakeholder. It is patterned after the British, uh, the BBC trust, the management that operates the BBC. You are asked in Nigeria, you have political appointees. And if you are not careful, you bring somebody to the studio and the president is giving an expression to his opinion and his view, the NBC will slam you with a fine. Where is that done? I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't seem to, to understand, to understand that. But if the way and manner this present administration was the grand NBC and free speech, if that is the way and manner it was done under Jonathan, the majority of the people in government today will be in prison. That's the truth. So, Judy Johnson, so why can't we move to the place where the NBC or, you know, press council, all of them could actually be free from government interference? Uh, from the world go itself, don't you think the formation in itself is faulty? Why should it be a thing of the government, really? Yeah, well, that's... That's, that's the next level, and that should be what um, should be the goal of those of us that are stakeholders and practitioners in the media industry. You see, it's, it's the best control for the media is self regulation and not government control. Now, when you have the regulatory body being managed, being controlled by the stakeholder, and various stakeholders nominate people to membership of this body. I can assure you that professionalism will be the order of the day. Not partisanship, not propaganda, or promoting the selfish interest of those that are in power. So that's, that, that's the angle, that's the area we should be looking into. And that should be a plan of the government has no business, for example. In NBC, that should government have absolute government has its own mouth which is the NTA. Government should control NTA. <laughs> government should control everything. But leave the practice. But, but, but J.J. Johnson, I mean, let's even look at that exactly. Don't you think that it's already faulty? We understand the fact that prior to this time, government had a monopoly. And once upon a time, it was government-owned, uh, you know, media houses, like the television house, like you have mentioned, and including the radio, up until the time where you had Babangida with his liberation policy in 1992. And, of course, independent license had to be given. But... Of course, moving forward, you have the NBC also coming through. What difference does he make? Uh, like we already know, it's like you cannot be a judge in your own case. And so um, the fact that the license was given to, for independent media houses, and then you still have government controlling it, uh, what result do you get? How do you even achieve press freedom? It's a classic piece of um, my local dialect that you give someone a ram and you did not release the, you did not use the rope. So you are not giving the person anything. You still have control over the ram. Um, the, the deregulation of 1991, which led to the establishment of various private radio and TV stations across the land and border of this country, brought about a change. Now it liberated the broadcast spectrum. I can assure you that that singular fact has made it virtually 
it's not near impossible for us to have meeting extension into our politics. You know, in the past, all you just need to do is just for you to see FRCN and then automatically you have a change of government. But with that, how many registrations do you need to see? And then you have given opportunity to a lot of people to hear their views, to have their opinion, to have given voice to the voiceless. So the, 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 the space has been democratic. And that's the goal of the regulation. But having government in controlling the practice is what is not good for the development of our society. You know what is good for the development of the press? Because the press is critical to national development. The press is critical to sustenance of democratic values. Now, the press, even the 1999 Constitution as amended, understood what should be the rule of the press, made an exclusive provision for the rule of the press. Section 22 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. So the press, yeah, be the watchdog and the whole government accountable. How could the body that be, that should hold government accountable be held accountable by the people that is meant to hold accountable? It's a contradiction. Because the press should be independent of government control, because the press is the watchdog and it should be the body that should hold them accountable. That's, that's, that's what the country, and I think that media organization needs to go to first and challenge the exclusive right of NBC to have control over them with respect to what section 22 of 1999 concern made exclusive provisions for. However, there is also a provision in the cultural section that is this. Oh, the constitution took away some of the responsibility that the culture has given to the media in terms of control in section 22. And that is the problem with the 1999 constitution. It's, 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 it's a text of many contradictions. But however, the, the major way we build democratic space we build our society, we build the system, is for us to approach the court. Let the court determine. So I'm calling on um, any Nigerian group of editors, Nigerian group of journalists, Yatau, all the national body, Nigerian broadcasting organizations, for them to come together and challenge government with respect to the viewers attempted by not this government alone, but by different government over the years to stifle press freedom. Because without press freedom, there can't be democratic society. All right, Judy Johnson, um, the minister seems to believe that um, Nigeria, uh, Nigerians misconstrued um, um, their attempts to, you know, regulate um, social media, trying to hamper, you know, with, uh, maybe in the independence of um, the media in the country, that's one of the issues. But in your opinion, would you say uh, this has gone beyond just uh, you know, the, uh, the reg regulation of social media in Nigeria? Yes. Um, if you, if you trace the historical development of the media, there has, there has always been the talent with the emergence of the media. When newspaper emerged, it was a threat to the monarchy, was a threat to the edit because the edit had monopoly over the distribution of knowledge, sharing of knowledge on the newspaper. Thing. Same with magazine, same with radio, same with TV. In actual sense, when TV came, it was said that TV cannot be left in the hand of private operators. That's why it started as a model of public broadcasting. So, it is not, it is not in new when you see new media being developed inspired by technological innovation and which gives more power to the people. What has new media done? What has social media done? It has given everybody to be both the creator, producer, 
and consumers of media tech. So anybody can produce. So the power of production is not limited to the hands of very, very few media organizations. Or few allies that can afford to establish media organizations. So that itself is a threat to those in control who want to control the people. So it is, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is not in new. One of the challenges we give for her then, what we call yellow journalism, who is about gossip and the rest of it. So what's different with a lot of things you have on social media now? Okay, um, so, so let's look at it now. I, we, I mean, with a lot of emphasis, how would you describe, you know, the press under this administration? Do you think that, you know, press freedom, because few more days uh, this government will be out of place, uh, led by President Muhammad Buhari. So how, how would you describe press freedom under this administration? You think it's been fair? Well, or When someone, when the Minister of Information comes out regularly, to do an assessment of the administration scorecard with respect to the freedom. You know what it's all about. So it's, it's an indication that something is, something is wrong. Um, if you have to score this administration with respect to press freedom, I think you will get between 35 to 40. To 40. That, that's the score mark they, they'll get. It, it, it's, it's, not, it's not good, it's not fair. It's, it's, just, it's just poor. Because the relationship has been with that, that and mouse relationship. So, if not for public, if not public criticism, public opinion, I can assure you that um, it would have been worse than what we are witnessing now. So the minister is just going to be done in your speech. So what more can uh, the media do in this instance, uh, in as much as government is denying that um, there are threats to the media and uh, we know all of the issues, what more can we begin to do to actually make sure that um, our work, our report, our, our reportage, our comment, and our analysis, you know, are actually pushed to the fore so that um, we can actually play our role as the, the, uh, the fourth estimate um, of the REM. What more can the media do? The media can't do much more than what they are doing now. Even the media is fair. Justin, you, know, you and I know the media organization has threat. The environment is not. It's not, it's, it's not conducive. Don't forget that the media is also a business model. Now, all you, how, would you, how much does it take to run a media organization to power your station with business and the rest of it for people to enjoy? You need to make things that divide That's why some have said that you have allocation for the first tier of government, second tier of government, the fourth tier, the third tier of government. The fourth tier of government, which is the media, which is the watchdog. There's no provisions for them. There's no, there's no budgetary allocation. So they are, they are striving to survive. In fact, the media has done much more than they can do in, the, in view of the prevailing circumstances. In view of the prevailing circumstances. So we just, just imagine if the media organizations were not dead and their viewers are trying to fight with them. The, the draconian policy with respect to their economic impact as an economic model. Because the visual issue, the newsprint, distribution and circulation of newspaper and the rest of it. So, Justin, I really salute people that made investment in media organizations. They are doing such services because they are really helping the society to, 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 to move on. Because without the media, the society is not even aware of what is going on within the society. The purveyor and the melting point of what happens in the society. All right, Jide, uh, the minister also seems to think um, that um, journalists or uh, the media generally, you know, have been uh, unethical in the sense that um, they, they have been playing more of um, the opposition of um, government. Do you really agree? 
that the media has been able to put sort of the video. That would be unethical. He was asking if it's ethical for the media or journalists to be or to play opposition to the government. Well, the media is not going to be in support of government or to be in opposition of the government. The media is responsible as the watchdog. Tell government what they are doing right. Tell them what they are doing wrong. That's, 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 that's the role of the media. The media is an independent body that has a role of maintaining order in the society. If that order is in opposition to what government is doing, to do it, if that order is in opposition to what government is doing, so be it. So the media has no friend, has no foe. The media is a watchdog. And the watchdog will call you out when you do good, when you do bad. So that's the role of the media. So put but differently unfortunately, now. Unfortunately, those in authority. Yes. Because they do a lot of things in speak mm. And don't want a lot of what they do to be in the public domain. They are usually seen with media as their position. The right to know. The media will always want to let the people know what government is doing. Government will want to conceal a lot of things they are doing. So there will always be conflict of people in terms of the rule and responsibility. And a lot of that, most of the time, the media is in opposition to what government is doing. Not government is doing nothing. But what government is doing in the interest of the public. All right, because I was going to ask that, but you just clarified that. Okay, so, but quickly, let's share your thoughts on this. The fact that, you know, the Nigerian uh, press freedom has recorded very horrible case of killings of journalists. I mean, coupled also with the Twitter ban is something that you have mentioned in the course of all of this. I mean, it's okay for all of the restrictions and harassment, but we have witnessed it. I mean, it started from, not really started from, because there will be several cases and incidents where you have journalists being killed. But at the time, you had one that was killed in Ibadan. I mean, if you look at the scenario, he was shot outside his company. Those who accompanied him were not hot. He was the only one that was killed. Shortly afterwards, you had, you know, the Twitter ban up until you had some restrictions and international intervention. But well, what do you make of all of this that we have moved beyond just um, the regular to the fact that journalists are being killed on almost a daily basis? But in the other, in the other of the profession, and then I come, I come in with a stuff to do. It has to do with what the an individual media organization is doing as a purpose of and then what are we doing as an industry? When I talk about the industry, professional applications within the industry, what measures are we putting in place to protect our members, to protect practitioners? We have insurance team, and we have the care packages. We have things that can take care of um, journalists. Journalists are like soldiers. Every day they go out, they go out in the war front. They go out in the war front because they are battling on ideas, particularly the democratic side between the ruling party and the opposition party. So often than not, we are accused by the the position party of supporting the government and the government accusing the journalists of supporting the opposition. So we are in between often between the blue sea and the devil. So as a result of that, we are exposed to a lot of danger at what I call the hazard of the thing. But as an institution, as a body, corporate and professional industry. What are the measures that we put in place for our members? Mm -hmm. We can't do that to government. We need to look inward and address this issue in terms of what salary, how regularly they put their salary, what welfare package they put in place, what insurance thing do we have for them? Because they are this issue is not limited to Nigeria. It's a global thing. Uh, journalists were paid in time. Just recently, a uh, journalist lost his life. A Fox News reporter lost his life in the train covering the war. So these are, these are, these are, these are always been challenging times for journalists. But what measures do we have in place 
to address this. All right, thank you so much, uh, G.D. Johnson, for being part of the show this morning. We appreciate your time and your thoughts this morning. It's a pleasure to be with you, Betsy and Dustin. Thank you so Good much, Good morning DJ. to all our viewers. Have a, have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you so much, J.J. Just as we look uh, forward to a country where press freedom is guaranteed, uh, we will continue to do our bid every day as we grow uh, the process. All right, that's it for Off the Press. We'll take a break now. When we return, it'll be time for us to head straight to a second conversation. Just before we call it a wrap, stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>